30. All right, you're watching Tech Taze, and previously we attempted some um, Lush PLA aluminum casting, and we used the vibration method to try to get rid of all the air bubbles. Well, in our next attempt, which we'll be doing shortly, we're going to be using a far superior method of uh, using a vacuum chamber. But there's one problem. Vacuum chambers are expensive. And if you ever look at the price of anything, it's ridiculous. So, we're making one ourselves. The complete setup is well under $100. I recently picked up this um, cheap Chinese vacuum pump. Um, shipping included, I think it was like $55. Um, and the rest of the materials, frankly, I don't even know what I paid for them because most of them came from yard sales, but you can get these, everything else for 20 bucks. Just go to Goodwill, uh, Salvation Army, whatever. The main portion of the chamber is just going to be this aluminum pot. And the beauty of this setup is um, if I need a larger chamber, I just make a larger chamber. That simple. So, let's get building. Alright, so this first part is optional. It depends on whether or not you want to see inside of the vacuum chamber. And it does require some pretty thick plexiglass or normal glass or something. So, um, if you don't need to see inside your chamber was we don't really need to um you know how to do that it's just i had this so i'm doing it so i'm gonna take the lid and i'm gonna mount it right in here first thing i'm gonna do is fire up this little angle grinder and remove the pop of it um just so that i can get this knob off it's in the way Turn this around. Alright, I'm looking at this a bit better now. And I guess I'm gonna bring in big person, uh, this big nine inch angle grinder.
yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's our window. Right, so as I've said in a previous video, I do part-time heating and air work. So that's how I got this. I'm going to be using this um, to attach the vacuum pump to the vacuum chamber. You could also probably get away with just using uh, something like this one is barbed hose fitting than using a hose clamp. But I had this laying around, this came up and over here. You probably won't be able to get your hands on this, but there are these little things that you use for tapping in the line sets where you don't have um, one of these valves um, just accessible. And they're on eBay and I will have them in the description. So if you can't find this and you don't want to go the barb hose fitting route, um, check out the description of this video. But I'm just going to first, well actually first I'm just going to remove the little valve stem. Alright, so I'm just going to get this piece out. Using tin snips and a pair of pliers, I was able to successfully remove the access valve from the piece of sheet metal. Now, since this line is open on two ends and we only need it on one, I crimped one end down in the vise. I applied a liberal amount of flux to the end put it back into the vise and soldered it shut. Now it is fit for use with a vacuum chamber. The vacuum gauge I was planning on using mainly because it's the only one I already had. So let's see on this. That's about right because I gotta tap the hole out later. I also drilled a hole of approximately the same size as the hole on the access valve. My thinking was I could solder the copper line directly to the aluminum. And I proceeded as you see here. It turns out this did not make a very strong connection and ended up just getting in the way as I tried to tap and ultimately I realized this wouldn't work so I came up with another idea I'll take this I'll thread this brass fitting in there stick the pipe and the copper pipe into this and I'll solder it to this because I know you can solder copper to brass so let's just get going with it all right, now I'm time in this next bit. The first thing I did was remove the excess solder left from my previous attempt, then drill out the hole large enough to fit the brass fitting. Um, it wasn't quite large enough to tap, so I had to go back and drill it out larger. Once that was done, I tapped the hole, put the thing in the vise, Finish tapping. Took the brass fitting, which was a little too tight of fit for the copper pipe, 
so I drilled it out and made it fit. I applied some flux, coked it in with a rubber hammer, soldered it up, and that's and what we did. Now time that we can actually start assembling this thing. So I took and applied some Teflon tape to our valve. I screwed it in with a press and a wrench, tightened it up. Then I did the same thing with the gauge. Once that was done, I reinserted the valve stem as it would have burnt up during soldering. I then smoothed up the window for the final steps. We're almost done with our chamber. All we have to do is fill her up. Run a generous amount of petroleum jelly, otherwise known as Vaseline, around the rim of the pot. We are using this because it forms a good seal and will not be a permanent connection as we will need to open this up every time we use the chamber. For the window, however, I would suggest using silicone caulk as it is permanent and is the best thing I had laying around. Alright, so it's actually been two days since I put the silicone on and we're about to fire this baby up again and see if we can pull a vacuum. I think it's on 30. It's really hard to tell the gauge might just not be able to read quietly down there. But it's looking like we might have a vacuum. Alright, now that the vacuum chamber is complete and I have given it the official Tech Tay seal of approval, it's time to have some fun with it. Why don't we test out a couple of random objects and see what happens when you put them under a vacuum? This first one is going to be the most scientific of them all because of the unexpected result. First off, bubble wrap. Twenty. Twenty-two. I'm gonna take this off and see what happens. Whoa, that was unexpected. No, let me, I forgot to let, let the pressure out. Uh, I think this one gives us the answer. Look, it looks inflated, but it's popped. I think they might have all popped or leaked air. Yeah, because they all have these little tears in them. I think they might have all lost a lot of the air inside the vacuum. But, they were already pulled so tightly that gravity couldn't pull them back down but when more air rushed in the air trying to fill up the vacuum pushed them down I think that's what happened so they did pop all right the next item I tried was your standard incandescent light bulb nothing really happened and in fact the bulb still works and finally I tried a soda can well, the soda can didn't explode. I think St. Nick looks a little bit bloated. What do you think? Well, 
I hope you enjoyed the video and if this helped you out in building your own vacuum chamber, um, tell me down in the comments. If you like this and want to see what we do with this in the future with metal castings and whatnot, then subscribe to Tech Taze. And speaking of that, Tech Taze is signing out.